This is my animation studio. Go on inside. This used to be really more of a home to spiders. We still have some spiders who live here. So I have a bunch of these for my new film. Um, it's about the custodian who I used to sneak into, I used to sneak into the boiler room at Nova, the high school that I used to go to. And I would talk to this custodian and learn from him how to do magic spells. And it was my private one-on-one -on -one classroom. It was my private magic school. It was incredible. And so I'm making a 20 minute film and these are the storyboards for it. This is the custodian himself. This is Atlantis, which he would talk about a lot. He was quite esoteric. This is the process of people being built with gold-based DNA instead of carbon-based DNA and being able to be giant minotaurs and creatures. This is me and the custodian in the boiler room over the shoulder shot with the custodian and then his assistant custodian whose name is Bob. He taught me some healing techniques and so this is some hands-on healing. Not hands-on, actually. We never touched. It was just, hold out your hands, and I'll hover my hands near you, and we'll create energy between, me, between each other. And uh, this is an animated loop, a maximized loop. So in this box, and I have about five of these now for this film. Whoa. Yeah, most of my other films so far, I've only needed one of these, maybe two. Now this new film, I think, is going to be 20 minutes long. It needs something like this. Oh, hi there! Oh my <laughs> god, this is amazing! <laughs> this is amazing. Okay, so my studio <laughs> oh my god. originally was a spider house, and I haven't worked on this <laughs> film in a little while. <laughs> Every everything is actually animated and shot in this film. <laughs> and now <laughs> That's amazing. I'm digging in to, so I can show you one of the scenes. I'm sorry, Spider. I'll I'll leave you alone. It's amazing. <laughs> What is this? Oh, this is a good scene to pull up. Really a good scene to pull up. So there was ex an ecstatic dream that I woke up from. We'll pull the storyboard for it off the wall. This is me waking up from this dream. In my room when I was 16. And I think of this as the opposite of a nightmare. It's waking up from a dream that was so ecstatic. It just felt beautiful and light and pulsing and serene. So I've only had a few dreams like this, but it's one of the central themes of this film is this dream that I had. So this is scene 37, which follows right after it. And what we're looking at here is how to assemble together this dream, the look of it. So for one thing, you need a mask. So I color this completely in. And then in After Effects, we can, we can cut everything out that's red. Or actually, we make a window out of the red and then everything gets to pop through that window. It's called a mask. The mask, cuts out this shine area. These shines are going over all of the statues. The dream <clears throat> is about a tower of statues. 
that I was climbing very slowly. So right here is a, these are, these can be used to mask out bright shines on the, on each individual statue. Then there is a layer C. So this is layer A, B, and this is layer C. Layer C has a shine that, that animates, that goes over it. This is like really popular in anime to just see a shine go over one solid object and you get this, this feel for its volume. You get a feel for the surface of what it looks like. So that shine goes over this cartoon, which shows the outline of all the characters that live on this statue. So here is Here is Marsh, who was once known as Jake, who is in all sorts of my animations. Here is Scallion, who is a character I play in a role-playing game. And all of these, I don't remember exactly what all of them looked like in the dream, so I filled them in with inspirational creatures and people that I adore. And then, so layer D is about, looks like five, six, six frames of the same thing drawn over and over again. So it's a six frame, like dynamic hold or breathing cycle or? Yes. Ooh, I've never done a six frame one. Ooh. <laughs> you know what my thing is about? Uh, I, I could tell you what my thing is about what to choose for a dynamic hold. Oh, like how many cycle. drawings do yeah. you do? Yeah, if it's one frame, you know, that's not animated, but it's in plenty of animation pieces use these just single frame, nothing going on. And they feel, they feel very, they can, you have to be careful because they'll be very lifeless if you're not, if you're not uh, giving the audience something else to think about or, or do. Two frames is nervous, Victoria Vincent. So many two frame holds. Um, three frames starts to starts to have a little bit more energy, and then four frames it's like it, it's starting to churn a little bit, and then five frames it sways a little bit more. It it gets into more relaxation. In the dynamic holds, the longer you retrace and retrace and retrace, the more you'll get to this point. I mean, if you could do a 100 frame dynamic hold, it would just be like underwater. <laughs> How, what's the max you've ever done? I don't know. I think I've done a 100 frame dynamic hold where it's just nothing. Oh yeah, it probably is the restless meditator oh. in both worlds too. That is just retracing the previous frame and letting, trying to actually make it be still which is, you know, in meditation or whatever, that's, it's hard. You, it's hard to stay still. And that was the whole point of that scene is to have a meditator and try to make them stand completely still. But, you know, 40 frames in, part of, the, part of their pinky is going in a weird direction or their foot is starting to go someplace. And, and so I just follow it and just let it go. And then and it, it's like it looks underwatery and it flows. So it's time. Dynamic holds. Um, do you want to see the rest of this? Yeah. Okay. So there's also this. Uh, this is myself, and uh, they'll be filled with a kind of gold glow, and they are climbing up the tower. And so all these things get sandwiched together in After Effects and colored, also and they become one finished scene. And this is actually one of the one scenes that we have finished. So that's scene 37 of 68. Wow. There's 68 scenes in this film. How do you think about color? Is it just intuitively or how much do you Think about it like as a like color script kind of 
idea. Do you think about it that way at all? Or is it more just the feeling of the shot? That's a good question. Color gives a lot of the character to these scenes. Originally, we had thought about, oh, here's all these scenes that take place in the astral plane, all these scenes that take place in the dream world, all these scenes that take place in fantasy, some in, in the, the more ordinary moments at school and to give those a different, all, we wanted to give all of those a different color palette. And that ended up, I think it was good that we started that way. And we evolved from it and let it, we loosened up quite a bit over time. But it was one of my assistants that just went, oh, let's just organize our pens like this. Get to that. Instead of all the, all the pens are in the right place, these are, this is the jar of yellow. Yeah. This is the jar of blue. And sometimes you just have this impulse, I want my jar of yellow. And you bring that over to yourself and, and you can play with so many different yellows. That's why some of these scenes have massive amount of, of changes in, in uh, colors. You might even see in some places that you, know, you can make these smudges on the side and then uh, and then try to match them. Okay, so these are like sort of just palette tests or like something that you mm -hmm. kind of use as a guide? Yeah. Well, sorry. Okay, we're going into scene 37 and putting you away. I, I mean, I don't think that they're destroying the paper, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna kick you out. I already repurposed your entire home, this studio, into my studio, so I feel like I have to share it a little bit. Good night. Sorry to disturb you. There's even a little cricket here. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for visiting. Bye.